So let's suppose that we want to find the net force on the moon due to the gravitational attraction of the earth as well as the sun. So let's suppose the mass of the earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. The mass of the sun is 1.99 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. And the mass of the moon is 7.35 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. So we're also making the assumption that these objects are at a 90 degree angle to one another. So let's look at our diagram. We have the moon, we have the earth, and we have the sun. So if we connect the moon to the sun and then connect the moon to the earth, these connections are exactly at a 90 degree angle to one another. So Let's represent the force acting on the moon due to the sun as a red vector and the force acting on the moon due to the earth as a blue vector. And these forces act exactly at a 90 degree angle to one another. So, let's suppose the distance from the moon to the sun is given by this distance, so 1.50 times 10 to the 11 meters. And the distance from the moon to the earth is given by this value, 3.84 times 10 to the 8 meters. So what we essentially want to find is the net force that acts on the moon due to these two forces. So we build a right triangle. So we take this force and move it here and we draw the following force. So the force will be given by the hypotenuse, the magnitude of our hypotenuse. This is our net force. So to find net force, we simply take the sum of the squares of these two forces and take the radical of that value. So this is given by Pythagorean theorem. So let's find what the force, the blue force is, the force on the moon due to the earth. So we simply plug in our value. So our uh, gravitational constant g, our mass of the earth and the mass of the moon, divide that by the distance between them squared and we get approximately 2.0 times 10 to the 20 newtons. So in order to find the pink vector or the red vector, we simply plug in our values. So our g multiplied by the mass of the sun, multiplied by the mass of the moon, and divide that by the distance between them squared, and we get approximately 4.3 times 10 to the 20 newtons. So now in the final step, we simply take the square and sum that up, and we take the radical, and we get approximately 4.7 times 10 to the 20 newtons is the force, is the net force acting on our moon. So because the net force points in this direction, the moon will also travel in this direction.